new episode of my cast my cast official podcast this is your host kasturi and this is your host pallavi this season is all about the media masters where we take a deep dive into the ever evolving world of media and entertainment we are seeking out stories insights and behind the scenes processes for you to hear today we'll be discussing the world of live events we are excited to have ms tulika yadav former cmo at btm insider.in and former head of marketing and ticketing for oml festivals with us today on this episode of the media masters thank you so much for joining us today ma'am absolutely i'm happy to be here lovely so starting right off there is no denying that covid has had a very deep impact on the live events industry and as someone who has closely worked within this industry could you tell us about how the industry went about mitigating this crisis so the honest answer is that we were not prepared i don't think any of us in our lifetimes imagined that we would be in such a situation so the question of mitigating it um was actually something that came as the situation evolved right and as we were capturing news from different parts of the world um in india while we were sitting there it was still something that was happening elsewhere until of course they came march and the cases started to pick up here uh then it became a reality uh for the indian industry as well um and for someone who is looking at events day in and day out and the first thing that we actually had to started to see on our dashboards were the cancellations right um the cancellations and even before the cancellations the doubt what happens next i bought a ticket to an event is this event even happening should i go for it should i not go for it as a ticketing company you know we're talking to organizers day in and day out and trying to figure out their mindset um in terms of mitigating it as one started to understand that hey uh, there is an incredible risk involved with the virus um one cannot be very one cannot and should not be easy on the protocol that needs to be followed right so step 1 i think um, and i will speak for my experience at insider um uh, was really for us to sit back and say um for all the events that are happening right now it's okay if it goes on pause it's okay if it you know we're running cancellations because this is one of the hardest hit industries right events and tourism um and it went straight down to zero but as anyone in um in a company or with a team of people who are just like geared for building solutions i think our mindset also changed very quickly to that right it's like what do we do next because our while our obligation is obviously to our customers there's another set of obligation insider has grown with the events industry in india so what we were really looking at was how do we also support this industry in this time what can happen next so um the steps that we actually had to take on the live event side was to actually move it to a digital model uh, and it was extremely difficult because as event organizers also go no one had thought that we would have to carry a format that is actually been done on ground online right how do you make a festival come to live online life online how do you make how do you make a workshop come to life online uh and while there are learning opportunities and there were even the pre pandemic right um it just exploded to a whole new level so for us the key question was i don't think it's a question of trying to mirror the experience that you would have on ground but how do you create something new how do you create something evolved how do you actually create something you know that can be that can provide still provide an experience to uh the people who want it more than the strategic shifts i would say it required a major shift in mindset which is just you're completely rethinking what an event could mean how do you make it happen online what does that mean for an artist what does that mean for a um you know for a, a consumer uh what does it mean for fans right um and we actually just started from there okay so everyone talks about how virtual reality and the metaverse is the future of all entertainment right mm-hmm. but there are like your old school die hards like the people you spoke about the ones who like to yeah. head bang at concerts who think mm-hmm. that nothing will ever beat an in real life experience so mm-hmm. one where do you stand on this 
Hmm. And where do you think we go from here? Are we going to a hundred percent have all entertainment be digital? Absolutely not. So I don't think so. And while I'm not a purist on this, right? So I am not on the side of hey, all events are dead now and they're never going to happen again. Absolutely not. I think this is actually a great opportunity to make things hybrid, and that's already well underway. It's a great way. Uh, it's actually a great time to think about what you're going to be doing with your communities. online right even when things are open and events are happening in real life will it be all metaverse or all vr no but will there be large chunks of it which will be vr led or metaverse led or i think that what i'm really looking at your presence in the digital world will keep changing every few years right if you look back 10 years ago one would not have thought that and i'm taking the example of nh7 since they did pull off a festival online one would not have thought or imagined the day that he would have to do this right and there was a time when i remember there was there was no insta for marketing right there was no insta that we used for talking to people to buy tickets or tell them about the festival or things like that it was insta used to be on the back burner right and you might look at me and be like oh my god how old is she um but you know we, we'll go on go over that on a separate call <laughs> um the truth is that you just have to be really comfortable with change and if you're working whether you're working in media and entertainment whether you're working in another inter- industry like a marketer as a marketer um you need to be pro that change right uh when i say you need to be pro that change i don't mean you personally you may, might decide that you have grievances with it but i think what you really need to look at is what is what is the brand that you're really building right and where does this belong so a lot of uh, for example fashion houses have been really big to jump in um on the metaverse and that's great because i think there's always an early mover advantage to these things because with with an early move come early lessons as well right and the latter also holds true you can also sit back and say hey let me learn from others first maybe this is not the right time for my brand right now um and you decide to actually uh, jump in a little bit later and that's fine too but i think that's a reality that you can't walk away from so if you are thinking hey i can sit back and i can just wait for um you know things to happen in real life um i think that ship has sailed i think you do need to think about hybrid models for everything that you're doing okay um i'll actually jump into the next question because you did talk about it a little bit of like you know how live events work and so again a lot of us are students a lot of students will be tuning into this podcast so the work within live events includes a lot of subdivisions right there's marketing booking ticketing artist management curation production that's all these possible fields that we could go into so i just want your thoughts on a few of these that you know about and what are like the unique skill sets that you as a student would require to join these fields i think you require number one an interest in the field itself uh because when you start comparing the events industry to other fields i think and you know when i'm talking about other fields i'm i'm mostly thinking tech right now uh but also anything else that you might want to pick up right later you might want to pick up say consulting um i think the question is i don't think skills is so much a barrier for entry into um the events industry so if you are interested in working here my recommendation is always to uh just knock on doors get connected with people um and in turn see whether you like it see whether it's working for you and then go forward from there now and when it comes to skills you can decide what your particular area of interest is right because i think there's a very um wide opportunity of things that you can do so for example if you have a particular interest in graphic design nothing stops you from actually getting into not just marketing and um uh, marketing and communication design um but perhaps you want to think about set design and that makes you part of the production team that makes you part of um a team that's actually visualizing the area um similarly if you're someone who's interested in say um you're more inclined towards the business side of things again you can step into the events industry and actually look at the revenue drivers 
So in typically that would be sponsorship, typically that would be ticketing. Um, but that said, there's a lot, there are many more revenue opportunities, I think, that we still need to consider. Um, and you could build on those, right? You could be uh, someone who's in tech and look at the entire customer experience from a growth and on-ground point of view, from a ticketing point of view, from a marketing analytics point of view. Um, so it's it's fairly wide ranging. So it's a question I would say of where your interest lies. Yeah, and then actually trying that out because your twenties, I was told this by a very wise person, your twenties are for trying things out. Yeah, we hear that a lot of like, oh, you're in your twenties, you can do whatever you want. It's like, well, there's so much to do. We don't really know what to pick. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a great space too? No, it's a great space to be in. We have a lot to learn also and <laughs> discover. <laughs> pick like pick your top three things right just pick your top three things get your hands dirty start learning you know grab a cup of coffee with someone who's worked in that space um and learn about the ups and the downs and then then take a decision so i would actually like to shift the topic a little bit and given we were talking about digital and social media the social media landscape has actually created numerous opportunities for artists or people who work in the creative field but there is also a very real risk of a burnout because you have to keep the plate spinning to make most of these opportunities. So how can, what, or what do you think is a way that people can come out of this creative rut? I think this goes not just for creators, but it goes especially for creators, but it also goes for anyone who's online in this moment, right? Um, the systems are set up to keep you online for the longest period of time. Uh, and unfortunately for creators, you're living by the algorithm. Right? You're trying to make sure all the content that you're generating is is giving you the kind of returns that you need to grow your channel because, hey, your livelihood depends on that. Right? Um, to avoid burnout, I think there are, there are two things. Right, One is something that I think is much harder to do, but perhaps it's the longer, harder road, which is your ability to actually disconnect from work, to view your work as a creator on a channel not as a job because you are deeply passionate about it. Um, that's why you, you know, mostly become a creator in the first place. You're passionate about a topic or an area, but disconnecting from it so that you understand, hey, all the work that I'm putting in is for say X number of hours in a day. Uh, and I need to step out of that. I need to step out of my digital bubble and just rest. And that rest would typically, you know, it could mean different things for different people. Uh, it could mean spending time with your friends. It could mean, you know, just heading out and doing a class or going cycling for all you know. Um, but maintaining your mental health and understanding that, hey, at a certain point, this is work. I think that's how the disconnection needs to um, be built, right? Recognizing that this is work, recognizing this is something that's actually helping you grow. Uh, and therefore, you know, you don't have to fight every small battle. I think that's an important way to do it. And the other thing is where you just, you're scheduling stuff, right? Um, you Just as you pencil in all your meetings, please pencil in time for yourself. Please pencil in time with things that energize you. Um, I think that's, that's really the core way to um, avoid burnout. And there are tools as well, right? I think some of, I think this would, it wouldn't apply for creators who are experienced, but for the new creators who are coming in, please, please use technology, please use systems and tools where you can schedule stuff, where you can be away from your, you know, from your phones for a short while. Um, you can do that. So can you, can you figure out a system for yourself that actually enables you to create better content, create better content, create but also create space for yourself. That's actually very interesting that you mentioned about uh, disconnecting from work, which, and in on that note, I would actually like to bring up the topic of sabbaticals. So mm -hmm. it's a very... It, it's Nicely actually, timed. <laughs> it's actually a pretty popular way these days for a lot of creators also to come back re rejuvenated and recharged with a lot of more purpose. So talking about you, how has that journey been going on for you? And are there any reflections that you would like to share with our audience? I would recommend everyone take a sabbatical if they can. 
at some point in their career and i say if they can because honestly uh taking a sabbatical means that um you know you have set up something for yourself that allows you to take a sabbatical i think we also need to recognize that while you know you're seeing this trend of people being on a sabbatical right now and especially through covid as more and more people have realized you know th- things that are important for them or things that don't work for them in the workplace and what they actually need to focus on um not many not everyone can um go in for a sabbatical right you do have um you might have financial obligations that you need to meet or you might have family to support and so on and so forth so if you which is why i say if you can in your career sometime midway if you can try and do it and the reason i say it is because i think as human kind we're just trained to kind of be on the wheel and keep going constantly and uh, pausing and reflecting actually requires a little bit of strength i'm going to say a lot of strength um because it might uh, throw up some uncomfortable questions for you right so it's a work i'm doing is that something i really want to do uh is the work i'm doing having any impact is this the kind of impact i want to create is this what i want to be remembered by um so i think taking that sabbatical taking that time off and really tuning out of work is uh, extremely important and you might decide how you want to use your sabbatical right so i know a bunch of people who've taken a sabbatical and they've just like upskilled you know um there's a lawyer who's now done an mba and then also done a cfa and then you know thrown in some coding and that's that's their sabbatical uh, and that's great um but my sabbatical was entirely focused on rest and recovery so for me i did i made every effort to tune out and travel um and that's where i've been under a rock that sounds incredible like that entire journey sounds very incredible thanks thanks kristi so now we'll move into the student segment question where we have mm-hmm. students send in questions for our guests so the first question is from aditya basu he asks how does a comedy event along the lines of what kenny sebastian does maybe and a music event like weekend or differ in terms of marketing okay that's a great question i think i think when it comes to marketing of kenny sebastian's show versus or like with any comic right uh um, the difference in marketing the way i look at it fundamentally first is start looking at the format right that's where you start kenny sebastian is a well known uh, artist possibly uh, i'm going to assume in this case is say playing to an auditorium you would versus of nh7 or any other festival of a similar nature where it's multiple days and it's multiple uh, stages um and there is quite a difference in the level of investment between both the properties so that's your starting point you first actually think about what is the format of the event that i'm actually marketing uh from there you actually go into what are the pegs for marketing that i actually have um in an n7 it's not just um the artists of course the artists are a huge part of it um but also other drivers uh given the nature of the festival as well right so you start thinking about hey is this a legacy festival does the festival already mean something to the community in which case um you know can i uh look at um marketing message messages that would resonate with the set of people that have actually been to the festival before right because what's the fundamental difference there they've been to it they've seen it they like it or they don't like it and you need to tell them it's happening again versus in a Kenny Sebastian show what are you trying to do you're trying to reach out to Kenny's fans right and the work that's actually happening around i would say a Kenny Sebastian show um is being done through the year as Kenny is actually putting up content right and it's reaching more and more people um and as that's happening um you're now trying to convert people to come for a live show and a live show like we know there are far more people who are watching a live show than they uh, sorry a show online than they are uh watching a live show right so you're really looking at um if kenny has fans in xyz pockets which you can actually get from analytics how do you actually get them to come to the show then the question then becomes of course of expansion right so if kenny's done one show 
hey he's going to be in city in the city an extra day um can we actually add another show so what do i need to do for that uh so marketing in those respects uh, you think about the format you think about the legacy you think about the different community of fans that are coming um so is it someone who's already come once is it someone who's coming for the first time um then you're playing with different marketing messages through those um and you're also playing with ticket pricing as well uh to figure out you know what's working for the different uh, uh fan groups and then you go from there but inherently all marketing systems are the same right whether you're a large company or a small one you just have to decide um how much can you put into it and therefore how much can you put into it uh, in terms of marketing but also where is your community online right where will i find my people um where will i find my people offline as well if we're just talking about it um you know in in totality that you would actually explore every single uh, i'm sure you, you know you go through touch points in your marketing classes <laughs> Um, yeah so then you start figuring out and is this where i'll find my fan and if the answer is there is yes is it cost effective to go there um and and that's how you take it so we have one more question from a batchmate of ours this is a question from vandan suba he asks a lot of the live performing artists currently have attempted to move to the digital side with their entire concerts shifting online Mm-hmm. how viable is this or long term is this digital presence going to be and what is the future of it after the pandemic ends so i think it goes back to what we spoke about earlier right um this is a great time to build your online communities if you haven't done it already um it, it's been a while since the pandemic um so like i said if you haven't started thinking if you think this is a short term thing it's not um how viable is it in terms of a career again it depends on the type of artist that you are right it depends on what genre are you really in is it music is it something else um because being online again you know it opens up like yeah a complete uh, palette of opportunities and you're not really reliant on you know live income only right that said of course it's much harder for some rather than others um uh, if you're a musician um you can do great things online there are several 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 musicians um you know who are breaking out on tiktok they're not going live right um and then you have you figure out what the revenue that are coming in are coming in then from brand endorsements so um i think the question might have come from someone who's thinking about being an artist in which case uh yeah we need to know uh, what type of artist in order to give really solid advice <laughs> i think when is it viable this, yeah. yeah but is it viable <laughs> yes it is viable mm-hmm. being an artist is not easy right you're really taking a very um you're taking your creative process out to the world it's going to hurt um it's it's not an easy career choice uh but then every career choice comes with some difficulty right in some shape or form so it's a question of like how much resilience do you have and how strongly do you feel about it um i've seen enough people who you know go from um consulting to become a full-time musician so works it i think it works both ways so whoever this is well good luck and we're rooting for you <laughs> okay speaking of things you feel strongly about we've come to our last mm-hmm. segment and i would say the most rapid segment because it's the rapid fire part here we ask you really short questions kasturi and i are going to just bounce back and forth and first thing that comes to your head that's the answer we want we're not okay. looking for a really long explanation just whatever god gonna, tells you I'm that's i'm going to give answer. you one as a bonus anyway okay okay sounds good yeah i'll follow <laughs> each answer one with i'll follow each answer with a really long explanation 
<laughs> okay. Go on, go on. Yeah. Let's begin. I'll start. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you could pick one artist or band, dead or alive, to manage their musical performance, who would you pick? BTS. Oh yes, that's a lovely answer. Yeah. Oh sure. my god. So BTS. many people are going to be so excited about this. Their concerts are just crazy. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> the next question. If you had to describe your career in three words, what would it be? Three words to define my career. Wow. Um, I would say complex, exciting, breakthrough. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Next, another three words description. Describe the live events industry in three words. Sleepless nights, many. Three words. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Okay, final question. If you could recommend a book or a movie for the listeners of this podcast, what would it be? So I have a favorite and I recommend it. I recommended it to my teams. I recommend it to people I'm mentoring. It's um, a book by James Clear called Atomic Habits. Um, uh, I see yes. Pallavi's nodding and Pasuri, so are you. So I suppose you've heard of the book. Um, I think it's an incredible book to help you understand what you need to do in order to achieve change right so it's not a book in the sense of i think the book is a breakthrough for you if you do decide to apply any of it but if you don't have time for the book um please subscribe to the newsletter which is incredible and um the author promises the most word uh, the most wisdom on the internet uh, and it truly is so every week he sends out a newsletter and it, you know, it has three sections and it's, in, it's really um, insightful and, you know, he's asking the right questions um, to help you just think a little deeper, think a little bit differently, uh, take a little time out from the day to day to actually explore, you know, where is it that you're heading and how you're headed. I think that how is what um, Atomic Habits really addresses. Um, Because we're looking, I think we've become people who are looking for change very, very quickly, very instantly, because we're surrounded by mechanisms that offer that, right? You have food at your doorstep, you can book a taxi in a few seconds. Uh, And a whole world has become about uh, just shortening the period of time that's invested on any one thing. Um, And I think this book, as well as the newsletter, gives you... uh, it gives you a little pause. It gives you a little moment for reflection. So, yeah, that, that would be my recommendation. Yeah. I think that's the one long answer that you were allowed to have. Allowed. Out of the okay. yeah. thank, thank you so much. <laughs> no, no. But I think your explanation helps us understand why we should go for the book. Because mm. I, like Kasuri and I were nodding. We've heard of it a lot, but we've never reached out for it. But I think mm. this explanation might make us go for it, actually. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Tulika, for joining us on the podcast. We had a lovely time talking to you. And we're so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Media Masters. Stay tuned for the next one.